So today, Joanne Gillette is going to share with you the advantages of annotating PDFs using Adobe Acrobat Professional. She'll also provide an overview of the tools available to make annotations and provide some guidelines for best practices. Joanna is an account manager here at Allen Press and relies on these tools daily to facilitate <coughs> communication between our customers and our composition department. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Joanna now. Don't forget to use the chat box on the lower right of your screen to send in your questions. Select host in the send, in the send to drop down box. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and give Joanna the microphone now and we're going to get started. Thanks, Melanie. Um, I'm delighted that you're all here to be with us today um, to talk about annotated PDFs. Um, one of the sort of emerging trends in our industry and a quick and easy way to facilitate communication uh, with your printer. So, um, I'm going to go over just a few basic things as we get started. Most of you are probably familiar with P PDFs already, using them in some capacity in your editorial office, but just in case I do want to cover a few basics. Um, the presentation today, uh, we're talking about tools that you can use with Adobe Professional, so please be aware that um, if you just have the free reader, you're not going to be able to do all the things that I'm going to show you today. Um, so you do need Adobe Professional. Uh, we recommend version 7, 8, or 9 just came out as well. Um, and of course, it's not a free program. It, it does cost you a little bit. Um, but I think you'll find it's, it's well worth it for the communication uh, benefits. So um, as most of you probably know, PDF stands for Portable Document Format. A PDF preserves the visual appearance of a document including the layout, fonts, and graphics. So when Allen Press sends you a PDF of um, article files, what you're getting is a representation of the native file. Um, it's not the native file, so when you mark corrections, you're marking corrections that we will then take back to the native file um, to make the corrections there. So, but using PDFs allows you to make comments directly on the electronic file and, um, and to go back and forth between your, the editorial office and authors to um, get everybody's comments. There are a lot of advantages to using annotated PDFs over a hard copy workflow. Um, the annotations are much cleaner and clearer. You don't have to worry about messy handwriting or cramped margins. Uh, it's really easy to access the files. You don't have to um, worry about storage and um, just, you know, looking through papers. It's also really easy to search in the text, and you can reduce the, your courier costs and time lag quite a bit by, just by using annotated PDFs. It's a really quick way to review corrections and check them all off. So what you see on your screen now is um, a scan of some hard copy proofs that have been marked by hand. So you can see these two pages are pretty messy. They've got a lot of corrections. And the, the annotations that have been written in are, are really kind of difficult to read. The margins are cramped. Um, there's just a lot to go through. It's easy to miss something and, and can be difficult to, um, to read. By comparison, marking the same corrections on an annotated PDF provides a much cleaner look. Um, this is just a screenshot. but. You'll see later on when we look at an actual PDF that if I were to mouse over these annotations, you'd be able to see what they say. Um, and so it's really just a much cleaner way to communicate. Storing hard copy proofs can really be a challenge. Um, some of our offices look like this with banker boxes all over the place with hard copy proofs from a few issues back. Some of us are even less organized, and we just have stacks of paper proofs. Uh, it can be really cumbersome and messy and difficult to find the, the right article that you're looking for. And of course, by comparison, storing PDFs is incredibly simple. Um, you can organize in whatever fashion you desire, and it's really easy to see everything that you have um, available to you. Searching hard copy proofs 
can prove to be a cumbersome task, especially if uh, there's a global correction that you want to mark, something that you need to check in various places, um, you end up squinting at the page and spending lots of hours looking for the right words. Uh, by comparison, you can search directly in a PDF um, to find particular words or phrases, and that makes it a lot easier to search if you're looking for something specific. Mailing hard copy proofs um, can also be quite expensive, and it takes up time. Um, you can see from the information on this slide, um, if you're in, if you need to FedEx standard overnight, if you're in a rush and you need to get proofs to the printer in a hurry, you can be spending upwards of $60, depending on where you are in the country and where you're mailing to. And those costs can definitely add up. Um, by comparison, sending in electronic files, PDFs versus via an FTP site or even email, the cost is free and the time is virtually instantaneous. Um, you can get your files there immediately and save a lot of time and money. Reviewing corrections in a PDF is also incredibly simple. Um, it takes maybe a little while to get the hang of it, but once, once you know what you're doing, it can be very, very easy to go through every correction in a, in a PDF. And, um, it makes it difficult to miss something, which is a definite plus. As you know, if you were marking a lot of corrections to a document, it's very easy to miss one or two things on a hard copy proof. So um, that just takes care of some of the background and advantages um, to using annotated PDFs. Now let's get started and actually work on some PDFs so you can see the tools um, that you'll be able to use. So you should see on your screen now um, just a PDF. This is just a randomly generated PDF that I created for the purposes of this presentation. And first I would like to show you sort of the five main tools in annotating PDFs. Um, these are your meat and potatoes, if you will, um, the tools that you'll be using most often to communicate corrections. The first uh, note I want to mention is the sticky note tool. This is just what it sounds like. It's a digital sticky note. Um, it's really good for general comments. If you have a comment on a whole page or a whole paragraph, um, it's good for marking figure or table replacements. It's not terribly effective for specific edits. So if you want to change specific te text, this, I'll show you a good tool for that. But the sticky note is really good for general comments. So there are a couple of ways that you can get to the sticky note. You'll notice up here in your toolbar where you have your commenting tools, um, <coughs> there's a sticky note. It just looks like a word bubble. And if you click on that, and then uh, you'll notice that your cursor changes. You can go down to this, the page. And wherever you want to make that comment, you would just click again. And it'll immediately add the note exactly where you clicked on the page and then give you a text box so that you can add your general note. Another way to add a sticky note is um, just by right clicking on the page. Again, just place your cursor wherever you would like to add a note. And if you right click, there's an option usually right at the top um, to add a sticky note. That's sort of your one-click method for adding the sticky note. Um, and of course, I always prefer the one-click method because it's just a little bit faster. Um, as with any an annotation, if you add a note erroneously that you want to get rid of, you just need to click on the note to highlight it and then click delete on your keyboard. So it's very simple. The next tool that is very effective and I think um, gets used a lot, the next set of tools really are the text edit tools. So these are tools that you would use to edit specific text um, so that you can you know, highlight exactly what you want to, want to change rather than using a sticky note tool that says, in paragraph three, please replace the with they. Um, you can actually go in and mark the V to be they, and it's a lot cleaner and easier to understand. So um, 
the best way, I think, to annotate using the text tools is to go ahead and click on text edits on your toolbar so that this is highlighted, and then you'll be able to use it throughout the document. So once you find the text that you want to edit, you just need to highlight it. And if you like, there are a couple of ways to do this, of course. Um, you can come up to text edits and click on the arrow and choose the tool that you want to use. So I'm going to replace text. So I've chosen replace text, and I get a pop-up box so that I can type in my replacement text. That takes a couple of clicks, um, and as I said, I'm a fan of the one-click method. So um, my recommendation would be that you highlight and then right-click to choose replace text, and you can do the same thing, or even faster, once you have text edits selected, you can highlight, and if you want to replace text, just start typing. That will immediately pop up the box for you with the text that, that you're using. You can also use your um, control V to paste text. So if you have the same text that you need to enter in several places, that works as well. Again, for that, I just highlighted and then started typing the replacement text. Another tool that you will probably use quite often is the insert text. So this is good to use if there's missing text. Um, so if I intended to put an extra word in here, I can place my cursor by clicking on the screen. I can come up to text edits and choose insert text at cursor and then type my new text. Or I can place my cursor and right click. Excuse me, I can place my cursor and just start typing. And accomplish the same thing. So again, that's sort of your one-click method. It's pretty intuitive. If you want to add text, you just place your cursor and start typing the text that you need to add. Another tool that you're going to probably need to use is the delete tool. So um, if you have a word that you need to get rid of, um, the same principle applies. Basically, you can just highlight and either choose from your text edits menu to cross out text for deletion. You can highlight and right click and choose to cross out text. or um, you can highlight the text and just hit delete on your keyboard. This is the method that I like to use because um, it's just very intuitive. If I want to delete, I hit the delete key. Usually when you're deleting text, um, you don't need to then add a note, but occasionally if you're communicating, you know, and you need to say why you want text deleted or perhaps you want to note that it's a printer's error and it needs to be deleted, if you double click on the annotation, and then you'll get a pop-up box and you can type in notes. Now, it's not necessary to delete the text and then type a note that says, please delete, because then you're just being redundant. Um, but if you do need to communicate, uh, you know, this is an author alteration, then that's a good way to do that. 